Hello everyone, welcome to episode 7 of Rayclast Weekly. We don't have a ton of updates for this week, but there are a few big ones, so let's get on that. GGG announced skill revamps part 4, the most exciting revamp in my opinion. It's all about Val skills. Now, there's a lot of information to cover here, but in general, the biggest buff to Val skills is that they now not only perform the Val skill, but can also be used to perform the regular skill itself. So it's basically now a two-in-one gem slot. In addition, you are also able to gather Val souls from damaging unique and rare enemies. Previously in boss fights, you get almost no ability to use a Val skill after you've used it once. So now you will be able to utilize Val skills while in those boss or more difficult beast fights. There are a couple nerfs here as well. Val skills will now no longer be able to gather souls while actually being used. Ancestral call support will no longer be able to support Val skills. In general, they are trying to balance um, with both buffs and nerfs the use of Val skills. I think we are likely to see a lot of Val skills, potentially Val Spark, coming back in the next league. They give a few different options here. I highly recommend reading through the actual changes here. Of course, I'm assuming this is going to apply to all Val skills, but their Val Double Strike comment is hilarious. I'll just read the first sentence. Bex has such a good sense of humor. We've doubled the number of doubles spawned by Val Double Strike, doubled the duration, and doubled the number of uses that can be stored. <laughs> so, very interesting. Really excited to see what that means for next league. In PoE Fluff, a quick note, they are making it so you are able to change your supporter titles to be supporter badges, which will help reduce the amount of clutter if you have a lot of supporter packs on the forums. A couple of MTX were also released. Goatman Pet, which is the newest addition in nightmare realism, terrifying half animal baby monstrosities. This literally looks like some sort of satanic ritual half man baby. I don't understand at all the appeal of this one. I'm trying you guys. However, on the flip side is Dark Immortal Call, which I absolutely need. I love this so much. Uh, we might be able to see a pattern here. I just want dark things. Celestial, gloomy, dark, stygian. Let's go. I love it. For GGG's Build of the Week, it's interesting. They are actually covering... C9, Q9, MD's Friends with Benefits, which is actually the same build that I covered in episode 5. So it's interesting that they're bringing this to the table. Um, I won't go too much into details. Basically, you're increasing the amount of traps, reducing your cooldown to, as Bex puts it, friend enemies to death. I do think that this is a fun idea, definitely a very softcore build in my opinion, unless you're great at manual dodge. But I am glad to see that they're featuring more meme -y and ridiculous builds. Although, I would give the original video a look. If you go to episode 5, you can see that video in the Reddit and Extras section. My viewer build of the week is actually a build that I created, which I call the Crabton. Now, this is a Chieftain, which uses a almost full set of crab armor. You can use the full set, but it's a little redundant if you do. And two Poet's Pens. The primary concept is that you get increased damage per crab barrier, and by being a more tanky build, you are able to maintain a large amount of crab barriers without necessarily needing the helm, since you're getting increased physical reduction, but also increased damage. So that makes the crab chest piece and the crab gloves necessary. The helm or the boots can be added. I find that the boots are useful considering they help keep regulating the number of crab barriers you have. Although as you'll see in the gameplay, I have an almost constant max level of crab barriers. By taking Avatar of Fire, we're able to transform all of our damage into fire. So I have 
Frostbolt and Glacial Cascade in my poet's pens, both with Cold to Fire support and then the appropriate supports, either Controlled Destruction or Concentrated Effect for each. We also have two of the Frostbolt Threshold Jewels. Frostbolt is going to be doing the most damage. That's why I actually purchased a helm that has the Frostbolt enchant on it and then crafted it for my needs since I didn't really need something to help me keep crab barriers as being a chieftain is tanky enough. Now you do get increased damage per endurance charge as a chieftain. However, I found that that is not necessary to stack endurance charges either. By using Vol's Devotion as well as a Romira's Banquet, you are able to get enough power charges from Frenzy and then use enough of those power charges to have a pretty consistent interchanging of frenzy power and endurance charges so you will have all three up at most times while i do have a taste of hate here and i think that that is helpful for the build the only flask unique that you do need is the wise oak and as a chieftain it is pretty easy to balance out that fire resistance so that you are getting your appropriate wise oak resistance balancing to get that extra penetration I personally use Curse on Hit Flammability, and that helps me get some more damage since I found that it's pretty well tanky, and also Life Gain on Hit with Frenzy and Faster Attacks just to help maintain some of that health regen. One thing that I found is absolutely necessary is to have Enlighten with your Herald of Ash and Anger because you will be using Aspect of the Crab, otherwise you will not have any mana, to help reduce my mana cost since I am only using Frenzy and that procs my spells. For my other spells, my Flame Dash and also my Summon Flame Golem, I use Blood Magic and that helps reduce my mana usage so I'm not having to focus on Elrion rings or take too many mana cost or mana regen, mana increasing nodes in the skill tree. Now while this build is good at clearing and it is quite fast, it is actually great at boss killing as well. As you'll see here, I've taken on Ferule. I'd like to do a more in-depth build video where I take on things like Red Elder and maybe Fenomus, which I find to be a more difficult bestiary boss. There are a few different ways to play this build. You can also put Immortal Call in your poet's pen and do it as a different build besides a Chieftain or Juggernaut if you wanted to keep those crab barriers. You could also replace virtually any skill with the Frostbolt or Glacial Cascade. I just find that it's a great way to clear but also do a lot of damage with that Cold to Fire. I actually leveled the build as Volatile Dead with Body Swap, and then once I got to maps, I was able to take that aspect of fire and start using Glacial Cascade and Frostbolt. I do have a paste bin below, which has my actual character currently as it is at level 90. But again, I think there's a lot of different ways you could do this build and make it similar and even take maybe different ascendancies, perhaps going elementalist and then keeping the crab helmet on. There are a lot of different ways you can maintain the physical reduction of crab barriers while also gaining that elemental damage. For Reddit and Extras, I am very excited to share with you Engineering Eternity's map cheat sheet. So this is different layouts for potential areas, and it is basically going to give you key points to check. This is particularly helpful for places like the Val Ruins. So this is going to be something in particular that's really going to help you out for those maze layouts. But also if you're racing, this could potentially be a tool. I know there are certainly racers who basically have layouts memorized, potential layouts. So I highly recommend utilizing this tool. I think this is so cool that he's made this. Engineering Eternity is very well known for providing good builds and a lot of beginner friendly content that helps out a lot of people. I know a lot of you use his builds and now he's created a tool for you guys to utilize as well. In other Reddit news, BooBooX on Reddit actually is responding to Slippery Jim's video and decided to do a quantity versus rarity episode for Blood Aqueducts. 
This is chaos per hour, chaos per 500 runs, gem XP per hour, rare rings, etc. And then they have it with no magic finding, quantity and rarity, just quantity and just rarity. So there's 61% quantity versus 70%, 128 versus 274. Some of the variables that I think were well controlled here is he's skipping any strong boxes, breaches, abysses, beasts, etc. Anything that's not going to be normal clear. I don't think that this clears up anything in the argument. If anything, this gives me more confusion about which is better, but I'm certainly hoping we can get to the bottom of which is really truly better for currency drops. Boo also created a full spreadsheet if you want to see every different type of currency here. If you just want the full totals, you can look at the darker gray line to see with 0MF, he received 1x alt, with the quantity and rarity 2x alts, with just quantity 1, and with just rarity 2. Again, I don't think that this clears up any issues, it just raises more questions, but I'm very glad that people are doing this research. Someone on Reddit also created streamer-based divination cards. Now, while I am sad that I'm not included on here, I suppose that's to be expected. But very cute, we've got Alkaiser, Pox, Ziz, lots of great art as well. I think it's great, Chris Wilson included in there as well. Definitely recommend giving them some props on that. Finally, a great video about breaking the PoE movement speed limit. Basically, as the video explains, you use the golden rule to stack poison on yourself. With the Assassin Ascendancy, you're able to increase your movement speed her poison stacked, and once you've got enough, you basically break the game. That's great. That reminds me of uh, playing The Sims. It just looks so goofy. You can actually break your game with this, so do be careful. He says around 2k poison stacks is the limit. <laughs> but I love when people find interesting mechanics like this. All right, everyone, that is all I have for this week. I hope to see you guys next week. I wish everyone luck in the races, or if you're not staying in the races, not participating in the races this time around, either way, I hope you all stay sane, Exiles. Say you say you like that. If I hate you, then I'm someone new. Baby, but you know.